okay in this video we will talk about the proof search and the backtracking technique in prolog okay so proof search is nothing but like if we give a goal to the prolog system right or if we give a query to the prolog system how prolog answers that question like what are the things it do behind the scene to answer the question so that is the stuff we will try to discuss today and we'll try to understand because those are the stuff is really important to understand because when you write a simple prolog statement right like it's a fact or rule so you have to understand what it can go behind the scene how how it will work so that you will be writing a proper statement over there the prologue will not get confused when with with your program okay so for that what we'll do today is we will if, if you remember when when i started working on this prologue playlist right so we we have given an example of a family tree right so over there we we created this particular this particular knowledge base right over there we created a lot of knowledge base facts like parents female male and there are a couple of rules like offspring mother grandparent and predecessor right so today what we'll do is we will take an example of grandparent this one okay so we will try to post a query to the prologue okay based on this this knowledge base it will try to answer my query okay so first let us see uh, how prologue is answering that one then we will try to analyze that one okay so for that what i'll do i'll go, go over here so if i just say grand parent okay grandparent m then n okay so these are the two two variables over here nothing fancy over here okay so if i just run this particular if i just give this particular query to prolog see if you see it is trying to find all the possible combinations over here right because if you see the first first pair it has given is pam and ann right so if i just go back to this knowledge base over here so pam is a parent of bob okay and bob is a parent of ann so that is the definition of our grandparent rule right now similarly it will it will try to find all the different pairs over here right even pam is as pam is parent of bob and bob is parent of pat as well so it will it will also give you a pair called pam and pat as well over here huh? let us let us let us see that one if you see similarly it is finding all the different different pairs over here now let us try to see why it is giving up all these pairs okay and how it is finding out all these pairs today okay okay for that what we'll do today is we will try to create a diagram first okay we'll diagrammically see how how it works over there okay so so we we started with so let me let me create an area over here okay we 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 started with our initial goal so let me let me write that down okay so we we started we we basically given this particular goal to prolog right and there are two two variable inputs over here m and n right so when prolog will get this particular goal or query over here what first it will do it will search through the knowledge base first okay so let us look at the knowledge base again if you see the knowledge base over here okay if you see it, it just go line by line over here until and unless it is finding a fact or a particular rule or basically the rule head which is matching with this particular query over here okay so if i just go over here the first match it's got is this one right the grandparent rule over here okay so now this particular rule is actually taking two variables right and the body of this rule is basically a and operator between these two parent rules or parent parent facts over here right that means these two clauses right the parent x and y and the parent y and z that means we are basically looking for those pairs where x is parent of y and y is parent of another person z over here okay so so now what it will do first is it will normalize the variable that means if you see my previous video when i talked about how prolog matching works over there okay and we have seen over there like when we try to match two variables right what prolog is basically doing it is basically it basically creates a third variable which is basically 
with the with the same name that means we are trying to say is those two variables are sharing the third variable over here okay so this is what we will be doing it now as well okay so let us do that one so i just written this one m is our is our variable where we have placed when we given the query to prolog right so internally it matched with x okay as these two variables are basically same so that's why prolog will be creating a third variable internally okay to just tell them like these two variables are actually sharing values over here similarly for n as well n will be equals to our z right if i just see the prolog knowledge base over here so n will be similar to our z over here right so that means n equals to z and similar kind of third variable again so we will just copy this one okay and we will just say n and it will be our z and let's say the variable is let's say three four five over here okay so for our own understanding we will color code them as well okay so now we we got the variable matching over here that means if i just go back over here for this x and z we basically created a third variable over here right basically created a third variable which is basically telling us that these two variables are sharing the same so that we are basically referring to the matching rule over here right now inside the body of this particular rule there is another variable called y over here if you see right so prolog needs to instantiate that variable as well okay so that means again we are talking about the sh variable sharing as well okay so we will just say y equals to some other variable we can we can keep y as well because ultimately it is it is it is same okay so maybe let us let us do one thing let us let us keep keep the y as well over here because we are talking about same variable over here as well okay so so we have our y over here so let us let us write it down okay now when prolog creates this this variables over here right so now if i if i just go back over here so we when it when it founds this particular this particular rule over here rule head over here right so internally that rule means we are talking about this body over here right so prolog is going to replace this particular rule head with this with this body over here right because ultimately it has to match this to these two guys over here right so so let us write it down okay now now if you see it over here prolog is already created some third variable over here so we are, we are going to replace the x with this one and the z with this one okay so now if you see it over here after replacing the variables this this particular body of that rule looks like this one so this this will be the goal of the prolog now it has to resolve right now how it will resolve it will it is going to use the matching rule over there right now this goal corresponds to two different parts over here the first part is parent underscore g one two three y and the second part is parent y underscore g three four five right so and this comma is a and operator over here so what how prolog will do that one so prolog will first extract the first part of this particular rule which is parent underscore g one two three y and it will it will search the knowledge base if there is any any kind of complex term with this particular functor parent and there are two inputs over here just like how prolog matches a complex term we discussed in our previous video right the similar way it will try to search and try to match with that complex term okay so let us see in our knowledge base first okay now if you see the first the first match it got is this one the first first complex term itself right because the functor is matching over here and here we have two two variables over here if i instantiate underscore g123 with pam and instantiate y with bob then then this this first part of this particular goal and this one is matching over here right so let us write it down there okay so so after after instantiating um, underscore g123 with pam and y with bob we have another goal left over here right which is uh, nothing but parent y and underscore g345 right so prolog already already know there is a matching matching term over here 
okay if it can satisfy the second term as well so it the it it can satisfy the goal itself right so so after initializing this one the second term will look like this one because we already initialized y with bob over here right so now again prolog has to satisfy this particular term or it it basically has to match with this this particular term again in the knowledge base right so let us what it will do now it will again go through the knowledge base and see whether is there any complex term okay with this parent functor and the first term is bob over here which is a, which is an atom right so let us let us see our knowledge base if you see it over here right so there are two terms over here if you see parent bob uh, with and parent bob with pat over here right so that means prolog knows there are there are it 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 found two term over here okay so it will try to initialize that one first okay whatever it finding first that means underscore g 345 will be first initialized with an over here okay so let us write it down so whenever it 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 found a term it can initialize that variable and it's matching with that with with that particular complex term over here prolog knows it has it is able to satisfy that answer that means our it, it knows what value it can it needs to initialize those variables to to get the answer over here over here under, underscore g345 which is nothing but n over here which needs to be an right and and there is another variable called underscore g123 which is spam over here which is nothing but our m over here because we at the end of the day we only bother about two variables over here m and n right so m will be spam and n will be an over here right so this is the first pair it got to resolve your resolve the query we have sent it out right now if we, if if we see the output we get if you see the first pair also it got pam and an over here right because of that same matching rule we just now discussed over here like the proof search this is this is called nothing but the proof search in prolog okay this is how it search the knowledge base and try to answer your queries okay now whenever i i i has i have given this one right so this this particular semicolon that means i want to know what are the all other possibilities over here right so let us see how how it is doing that so that means second answer i am expecting as pam and pat over here right so after initializing an so it will it will stop over there so we will write a circle over here okay circle means it is able to find the answer over here okay now when it found the answer and i have i have pressed that key semicolon over here what it will do it will now backtrack okay so this is this is the, the here is the concept of backtracking lies in prolog over here okay whenever it backtracks that means it will try to find all other different possibilities over here now where it will backtrack it will backtrack to the point where it left okay this is the this is called the choice points over here where we have different choices over here now if you see it over here once it is satisfied the first goal when it try to satisfy the second goal as we have seen in our in our knowledge base it got two choices over there right one is an and another is if i just go back over there and another is spat over here right so it will backtrack over here and it will try to reassign underscore g345 with pat over here now okay so let us write it down so for simplicity purpose what i have done is i have i have given this arrow over here that means it is nothing but we are just trying to showcase it is it is backtracking over here okay so when once it is backtracked it is again assigned this underscore g345 to pat over here and then it again it it got another match over here because if you if you just see the knowledge base over here so this is the second matching it 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 got right now it did not match with an again because when it backtracks right it remembers the previous choice it had made over there so this is also another important aspect of backtracking and proof searching over here it remembers what it already applied okay so then it applies the other part over here so it applied pat over here now okay then again it will it, it got a match with parent bob and pat right so that's why if you see the second match second answer it has given is our pam with pat over here right because pam it's already it's already know it's already because of this 
underscore g123 that is m it's already initialized with pam over here right for pam it it got two choices over here right so that is that is what it is doing underlying okay now now if you see once it once it got this one right again again what i did over here is if i just go back after pam bat also i have pressed another semicolon over here right so that means it needs to backtrack again right so let us let us go back that means now where it will backtrack because it it exhausted all the choices over here right it means it will backtrack from here to here now okay so let us let us showcase it over here okay so now it will backtrack from here to here okay so now what will happen now now again it will it will try to match right because it already initialized underscore g123 with pam right so it will not initialize it again with g1 underscore g123 with pam right let us see whether it has got any anything else over there or not in our knowledge base right so now first initialization done on pam right so now the second initialization it will do with tom and bob right if you if you if you if we just match it over here so that means again underscore g123 that means our m value will be tom and our y value will be bob over here right so that means again it will be matching try to match with bob and underscore g3 345 that means it will again try to match what are the parent complex terms are there with first term as bob right again it will match with ann and pat right so that means the next two answer will be tom and ann and tom and pat over here right let us see whether it has given that answer or not yes it has given tom and ann and tom and pat over here right now again once once it exhausted those two possibilities over here with tom with ann and pat again it will backtrack it over here right so again it knows it already initialized underscore g123 with pam and tom right so let us see the knowledge base here so this this two already it covered right it it already initialized underscore g123 with tom but it did not initialized y with lees right so that means it will again picked up this one because this is again a this is again a unique choices right so now we have tom and lees right so coming as now that means it will try to find out this knowledge base where the first term is lees because our y value is lees will be lees over here right so there is there is no parent clause or parent complex term with first term as lees over there right so it will it will move on it will again backtrack over here right so now the second next term it will got is underscore g123 as bob and y as ann over here right so now that means it will try to find it out is there any parent which is first term as ann no again it will backtrack right because this clauses will be failing over there right so next term it will got is bob and pat right so now again it will try to find the knowledge base is there any parent clause with first term at pat yes we have it here right which is pat and jim over here parent pat and jim so that means again it will go inside this one and uh, assign this underscore 345 g345 to jim over here right so that means my pairs will be bob and jim in that case right so if i just see the next output over here it in it produced is the bob and jim over here right so this is how prolog is searching that one now if you see it over here when after bob and jim also i pressed the semicolon over here right so now now it has exhausted now it has exhausted all the possibilities of the parent over here right because this is the ultimate goal it is trying to satisfy over here and which is already it's exhausted all the possibilities that's why prolog is giving you false over here okay that means there is no other possibilities over here that's why this false has been generated by prolog over here okay so this is this is the concept behind the proof search and the backtracking in prolog now this is a really important concept in prolog because when you try to write a program in prolog right you have to keep in mind this logic how prolog will try to find the answer over here in that way it will help you to write a effective program in prolog as well okay see you in next video in future videos we'll try to see some more more other interesting topics in prolog as well okay see you in next video